everyone. Welcome back to this episode of Just Another Year Chicago. My name is Dick Brody. I am solo today. And today we are going over the departure of Jimmy Graham and who is going to be his replacement to go alongside Cole Komet. Uh, Cole Komet still could use a seasoned veteran, you know, to come in and kind of mentor him still a little bit. A whole new offense coming into play and Komet in the tight, uh, the other tight end that we end up getting is likely going to be very busy as that has been a huge struggle for the Bears the last couple seasons involving the tight end in this offense. Quick shout out to Tony. Uh, he was unable to be here today. He was going to be here today, but he's unable to make it due to other obligations. But this is a very important position to him. But you're going to see him tomorrow as him and Nick Barr are going to be doing our Bulls uh, episodes. And they're going to be previewing the second half as the Bulls have the second hardest schedule in the NBA, along with all new potential signings coming up and the signing of Tristan Thompson and how this helps the Chicago Bulls. But we're talking about the Bears today and we're talking about the free agency of the tight end position. Rob Gronkowski has been a name that's been going around the NFL for any team that needs them. And the Bears have been pulled into that conversation over the last couple of weeks on Twitter and on Instagram. So it's exciting. But I'll share my opinion on what I think of Rob Gronkowski coming to Chicago. I have three other tight ends that I want to hit on today. I'm going to hit on one before I hit on Rob Gronkowski. So let's get into it, folks. Uh, my number one guy that I want the Bears to go out of, best bang for your buck, best player of the free agency tight end that we can likely get, in my opinion, is Miami's tight end, Mike Kaczynski. Mike Kaczynski is a 6'6", 247-pound, 26-year-old tight end. He had a big season this past season. You know, he's young, he's big, he's strong. He's a good blocking tight end. That's something that, you know, we have definitely needed. And his stats speak more, speak more to who he is as a player. Miami had a weird starting three tight end deal going on this past season. Adam Shaheen was one of their starting tight ends, which I can't believe still. But, you know, he has ripped it up a little bit more in Miami than he did in Chicago. Again, Matt Nagy was his offensive coordinator, so I give him a little bit of that. But Miami with uh, uh, Gazinki did a pretty good job. They targeted him 112 times. That is a lot of targets for a tight end. He had a 10.7 yard per catch average, but he only had two touchdowns this past year. A lot of them went to Shaheem and also Miami was a big rush offense. So it was like a weird situation in Miami uh, overall for the offense. Again, not sexy stats, but 112 targets. That's pretty awesome. And that shows that they trusted him. They put him in the position in order to succeed. That is no joke for a tight end. That's like Rob Gronkowski numbers. And I'm definitely going to get into those in a little bit in regards to targeting. Uh, tight ends, definitely not there, at least young Gronk. But let's go into a little bit more about Kaczynski. Uh, along with that, he's a strong blocking tight end, something the Bears have definitely needed this past couple of seasons, especially on the outside when David Montgomery or Khalil Herbert or Cohen were to rip it up or Damian Williams were to rip it up. And that's going to be have something that's coming into Luke Getze's offense this upcoming season. So definitely want to get a player like that. Uh, he also isn't worth that much money. I just want to put that out there. They're already predicting, according to uh, Spotrack, is that they're valuing him at $1.7 million a year. That's nothing. The Bears have $42 million in cap this next season. That's a, that's a need that we have, and that's also a good player that we can get for not a lot of money. I would give him maybe $2 million, $2.3 million just to be like, hey, like we really want you here. I mean, shoot, the Bears could even give him $3 million. I, but and, and that's if they create more cap, but the focus is the offensive line. But, you know, the tight end does, you know, pretty much act like a lineman uh, some of the time. So I think that he could be a big add to this offense. Now, why you guys are mainly here. Let's go into Rob Gronkowski. You know, it would be super cool to have him seven years ago. It would have been awesome. But, you know, Gronkowski is going to be a big ticket player because of the name, because of jersey sales, because of the threat that he still brings uh, to an offensive side of the ball. But, man, he is an injury guy. So let's go into a little bit more about him. This would only happen, and he would only come to Chicago, is that if the offensive line – uh, was upgraded significantly this offseason to give the confidence that this team will be competing. The defense is pretty good, even if we do lose Akeem Hicks or potentially another player. We do, are going to be drafting probably pretty heavy on the offensive line and the defensive side of the ball this year. So the talent will be there. And we've seen strides, you know, from Thomas Graham Jr., Wow, Nichols, uh, Roquan Smith obviously continues to get better. Jalen Johnson was hurt. And then Eddie Jackson hopefully will go back to Bo Jack. We keep saying that, but, you know, it's hopeful as always. Uh, but, you know, Gronkowski wants to come to a team that's winning. He's only been on winning teams, the Buccaneers and the Patriots. He's won two, he's won multiple Super Bowls with two different teams. Obviously, he's only played for two teams, do the math, but he's 32 years old. 
okay, on the quote unquote wrong side of 30 for an athlete, but you know, athletes are playing longer and longer. So he's still a decently young guy. Uh, a lot of injuries though, the last few seasons, uh, it, he's still a beast when he's healthy, you know, he's six, six, 265 pounds. Like that, that's a lineman. That's a very small lineman and he's lean. So he's fast. He's athletic. He's strong. He can bulldoze over defenders. And that's something that the bears could definitely need, but here's his career numbers. 621 receptions, 9,826 yards. So he's about to break that 10,000 reception yard, 15 yards per catch average all time in his career. That's insane. That's guaranteed first down and extra and 92 uh, receiving touchdowns. Obviously that is very impressive for any receiver, but for a tight end, that's insane. He said for 1000 reception yard seasons as a tight end, he is no doubt a hall of famer, but again, he's not the Rob Gronkowski before pre 2016 of being healthy, ripping it up and so on and so forth. Uh, he's only played two full seasons in his career though. This is where the injury topic comes into play. And that was in 2020. And that was in 2013, I believe. Don't quote me on that, but he has only had two seasons. And I know that for full seasons for sure, because he's been pretty injury prone. That's okay though. Cause he plays tough. And when he is in there, he gets it happening. And also he's a big postseason guy. He'll fight through the pain dur during the postseason. So in theory, the bears, we want them in the postseason. That means Gronk will be there. So Overall, no doubt his career is respectful. And a lot of people would like him in Chicago. A lot of big play, people that like big name players to come to the cities. I think he'd be a great addition. But for me, I would not pay him more than $4 million a season. The Bears have to be conservative with their cap this year if they're going to be going out and buying big name linemen, potentially a big name DB, a big name wide receiver, and then Gronk. Like $42 million is not enough. They're definitely going to have to restructure some contracts. They're definitely going to have to let go of some guys or potentially trade guys. So just keep a lookout for that. Right now, I am not on the Gronk train, but if the Bears were to get another 15, 16 million in cap over the next couple of weeks before the free agency starts, yeah, wouldn't mind it at all. Would love Gronk to come here. You know, make Komet the next Gronk, but we'll see with that. Again, I said I had four tight ends today, so quickly going to go through the last two. Uh, my third one is CJ uh, Uzuma from Cincinnati. With Jimmy Graham likely retiring, he kind of brings that same edge of uh, the, the Walter Payton man of the year feel, you know, gives back to the community, a great mentor, which he could be to commit. And he's still a young guy. He's 29 years old. So he's in the prime of his, his career as a tight end. He's a big body, 6'6", 260. So almost nearly the same size as Gronk. Uh, but his career, it was a career year for him last year. Um he, you know, he had 49 catches, 10.1 yards per catch. So obviously pretty good 493 yards receiving in five touchdowns. And he's a big red zone guy. That's what the bears were missing this past season. And he could definitely bring that to this team. Uh, he was injured at the end of the season, unfortunately, but he did play through pain in the super bowl. So we know he's a tough guy and he's a big locker room guy brings the mojo brings the swagger. Definitely could love to see him. You know, I don't know if club dub is ever going to be a thing again. Cause that was the naggy era, but who knows? So could come back or could have its own spin on it. So would love to see him come back. And again, that Walter Payton man of the year class to him is always a plus, especially for the community of Chicago. Uh, finally, this one people might not agree with, but you know, this is just a personal opinion. We kind of did this last time is bringing back uh, tight end Jesse James. That was Justin Fields favorite target last year during training camp, during the preseason. And even when Jesse James did get his opportunity, Fields was always looking downfield for him. These no doubt he was, if he's not used correctly in Matt Nagy's offense, number one, Matt Nagy never used a tight end this past season. And number two, that led to Jesse James not getting used a lot because tight end, you know, put one and two together, bam, you know, you have that situation. So he was on a veterans minimum last year. I'm sure we can get him again to do for the same price, roughly a little over a million dollars, not saying a million dollars is a small amount of money by any means, but for, you know, NFL perspective, not a lot of cash, but I really liked him in the way he plays. He's not a blocking tight end. So obviously that kind of gives a big weakness and kind of clues where the ball might be going if he's in, but he's an athletic big body guy. Maybe could turn him into a wide receiver. Maybe could use him on special packages. I'm no coach, but I like Jesse James a lot. I like that he has that relationship already established with Fields. And I'm sure if Fields were to sit down with Luke Getze and Matt Eberfuss and Ryan Poles would be like, hey, I really like this guy. Can you bring him back one more season? Let's see what he can do. Would love to see that. 
But those are my four tight ends that I would love the Bears to go after this offseason. Again, the offseason is coming up before we know it. It's almost March, and that's when free agency begins. Please stay tuned for more episodes. Make sure to like uh, like us on uh, Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and follow us on Twitter for all new updates. But with that, thank you very much for joining this episode of Just Another Year Chicago. My name is Nick Rohde, and we'll see you guys next time. 